sadly, we're passing on to you lot. I'm, I'm going to go over some of the consequences and um, some of the approaches that we've used to mitigate um, the difficulties. And I'm hoping also that some of you here might have some useful suggestions, either for the Zen packaging in Debian or for us as Upstream. So now, let me show you an overview of a typical Zen system with the key components broken out. Uh, don't worry, there's not going to be 46 slides like this one. <laughs> um, so firstly, I have to make a note about terminology. Um, we use the term DOM naught to refer to the first privileged guest operating system, which in most systems does all the back-end work of managing the system and its real hardware. Um, many of you who won't, sorry, right, yes. Um, many of you, even if you're Zen users, probably won't be familiar with several of the boxes on this diagram. Um, particularly, there's some internal pieces uh, which are part of our Zen upstream code. And you'll see I've drawn this blue box around the code for which we're upstream, and it's a rather unfortunate shape. And that's where many of our difficulties come from. So the code for which we're upstream comes in two big pieces. The first is the Zen hypervisor itself right here at the bottom, um, which you will have all heard of. And the second is this collection of libraries, scripts, daemons, supporting tools, etc., uh, which allow the host to do the work of managing and supporting the system and all the guests. Upstream, we call this part the Zen tools. Unfortunately, this is a bit confusing because the, there's also the Debian Zen tools package. Um, I'm going to keep using the upstream terminology here, so you'll just have to bear with me on that. Um, the Zen, Debian Zen tools package is a little thing up here, um, which is a sort of provisioning utility, which uses all the Zen tool stack code. So together with these higher layers, like the Zen tools package and OpenStack and whatever, um, Zappy maybe, um, we call everything above the hypervisor and the dominant kernel, the tool stack. So as you can see from this diagram, there are some components of the system for which we're not upstream. And there are three really important parts of that. Um, the first of these is the guest operating system. So obviously, this is the whole point of the exercise. Um, and so in some ways, it's the most important. Um, but it's also the easiest from a compatibility point of view, at least for um, a downstream like, Ze like Debian. Um, so the guest might be another install of the same Debian version is running in DOM naught, or it might be some other free operating system, um, which has been specially adapted, paravirtualized as we call it, um, for running in Zen. So we call that a PV guest. Or it might be an unmodified operating system for which we're providing a full PC emulation. So like an HVM guest. And that might even be a proprietary system, such as Windows. Now, the point of Zen is to provide a reliable and stable platform and to decouple guest operating systems from hardware and support software, like all this stuff here in, in blue and the lower layers. Um, and often, the guest will be run by a different personal organization to the host, either in some kind of cloud facility or because your um, hosting internal sysadmin providers are different to the guest admins. So we've traditionally had a very strong compatibility guarantee. Guests which are written against old versions of Zen and work correctly there are supposed to work on future versions of Zen. Uh, currently, upstream supports guests written to run on previous Zen versions going back to Zen 3.0, which was released in 2005. So that means we retain the ability to service all the old Hyper, guest facing hypercalls, all the I.O. facilities, memory management interfaces, even if they've been replaced by something newer, better, faster, less pain to support. And this compatibility guarantee goes even further. For guests uh, and Zen versions which support live migration, we aim to support live migration of your guest from an old version of Zen to a newer one. So if everything's working properly, um, you should be able to upgrade your Zen host without even needing to reboot your guests. Um, 
And this migration facility means if you have multiple hosts and enough spare capacity, you can do um, what Zappi calls a rolling upgrade, where you can upgrade your entire hosting platform, one host at a time, by migrating the guests off each host as it's to be upgraded, and then migrating them back again afterwards. So actually meeting this compatibility promise from upstream point of view in every detail is quite tough. And the most difficult part of it, or one of the most difficult parts, is we don't always know exactly how the old guests behave. And sadly, not all of the interface documentation was always perfect. But almost all these guest interfaces have pretty good extension mechanisms. Uh, so there are spare fields in, in structs. There's key value namespaces where we can add new keys. There's a fair amount of capability negotiation mechanisms. That's not always sufficient because guests may be buggy and even quite subtle changes can expose new bugs in guests. Uh, but even when that happens, we try to cope. So, for example, a particular common kind of guest bug is that it gets partial or broken support for a shiny new Zen feature. Um, so it then works fine on the old versions of Zen without the feature. Um, but when you upgrade your platform, the guest tries to use the new feature and stabs itself in the eyes. So we have knobs that Zen administrator can twiddle for each guest to say, well, just don't advertise that feature. So to work around, that lets you sidestep those kind of guest bugs. So what this promise means in practice is that when we're doing upstream work, um, we give forward compatibility for guests a lot of attention, both in design and implementation, and of course it means we treat compatibility bugs as regressions which deserve a fix and backports and um, all those kind of things. Now, there's one other difficulty with providing this guarantee, which I'll be getting on to, which is particular to HVM guests, which causes um, pain for downstreams, such as Debian. And I'll get on to that later. So the other big part of the system for which we're not upstream is the Domnor kernel. Most Zen installations use Linux. Um, uh, there are other platforms that support Domnor kernels, um, but certainly in Debian, the kernel available is Linux. So for many years, we maintained a fork of Linux. This is the Zeno Linux that um, Ian was talking about, which had intrusive changes to the memory management system, interrupt handling, hardware access, and so forth. And this became quite unsustainable, as you might have predicted. So nowadays, since around Linux 3.0, all or almost all of this necessary code is in the Linux upstream tree. So now the, the interface between the dominant kernel and the hypervisor here um, is much broader than that provided to guest kernels. Um, and also the interface between the tool stack and the dominant kernel is relatively broad. And this means the dominant needs to be able to support all the facilities for direct access to guests um, needed by the management tools, and it also needs to cooperate with Zen to manage all the hardware. But because of the way Linux is developed, and the fact that users would you know, constantly need new versions of the Domnor kernel for all sorts of reasons not really related to Zen, like running on new hardware or fixing security bugs, um, trying to maintain our own stable branch of Linux is a non-starter. So instead, we have a kind of reasonably loose coupling here between the dominant kernel and the other components of the Zen system. So we expect Zen and its tools to work with a range of dominant kernels. On the other hand, this does mean that life is, a, on the other hand, life is a bit, little bit easier because we don't try to be bug compatible um, with bugs in old dominant kernels, that is. If a user is running a Zen system, we expect them to be willing to run a kernel which has Zen-related bug fixes, even for bugs which were exposed by a new version of Zen well after the kernel was released upstream. So obviously we don't expect users to run these kernels themselves. We aim to push the necessary changes into upstream Linux stable branches and out to distros that way. Uh, but that does mean that you can rely on users getting backported kernel bug fixes. So this tolerably loose coupling um, and all the upstreaming of the mainstream Linux, the code into mainstream Linux, means you can use the same kernel for your Zen Dom Nort as will boot on bare metal. And as Ian was saying, in Debian nowadays, there's no longer any special Zen kernels. 
just the standard 686 Big Mem or AMD 64 kernel is good to use as a Zen DOM naught or as a guest as you like. So another important component of the traditional Zen system for which we're not upstream is QMU here. When we run unmodified guest operating systems, we need to provide them with something that looks like a PC. And in particular, we need to provide something that looks like a screen, a keyboard, ID and network controller, emulation of the underlying bus hardware like PCI and so forth. Um, for a long time, the QMU project has been trying to provide this same thing in a different context. So it was an obvious choice um, for reuse. But when Zen first wanted to do something like this job, the QMU project was quite difficult to contribute to, and the code base itself made a lot of assumptions about the architecture of um, what the whole system was going to be and what the purpose of the QMU code was. So the Zen developers at the time took a copy of the QMU source code into the Zen tree and just hacked it up until it did what they wanted. So uh, that, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a problem. So over the subsequent years, that version of QMU, which we now know upstream as QMU Zen Traditional, got important performance improvements, important bug fixes, um, security fixes were made directly to the Zen version since upstream didn't have a security response process, and I think they still don't. Um, we merged from upstream a couple of times, and we did try to upstream some or all of the Zen changes, but the number of factors made that, that meant that this wasn't entirely successful. Um, inertia and um, an unwillingness to expand the scope of the QMU project on QMU's part were factors. Um, poor communications really didn't help, and we had a lack of effort and thought there were more important things to do. So ultimately, that didn't really come to very much, at least not until a few years ago. But things have changed now. Um, the QMU project has been utterly revolutionized over the past few years and is incredibly fast-moving and dynamic nowadays and we've been aggressively upstreaming the changes necessary for Zen. So QMU Zen traditional is now in the deep freeze. But why do we need it at all? Well, one reason is the new QMU Zen uh, based on upstream is not quite ready. The Zen 4.2 release will still use QMU Zen traditional by default. Um, but we do expect the new upstream based QMU Zen to be the default in Zen 4.3. But a big of a reason is that we promised old guests would continue to run. The emulated PC provided by modern QMU Zen is quite a different beast to that provided by QMU Zen traditional. It's got different device IDs and many of the devices. The emulated chipset has been upgraded. The new QMU upstream QMU can't read the save files generated by QMU Zen traditional, so guests can't be saved, restored, or migrated to the new one. Even worse, Many guest operating systems react very poorly to a complete motherboard and chassis swap, which is what it would look like if you just upgraded to the new QMU and reboot it during a reboot. Even if they don't mind that in theory, in practice, the new setup might expose rafts of guest bugs, which would be very difficult to work around, especially given that we're now much more closely coupled to the upstream QMU code base. And while in principle it might be theoretically possible for upstream-based QMU to emulate the old one with sufficient if-defs and runtime flags, the resulting code would be very ugly, very intrusive, and not at all suitable for upstreaming. It would be totally unsuitable for long-term maintenance. So we, as the upstream, intend to main QMU Zen traditional indefinitely. Uh, that means that there are two versions of QMU in the Zen system, the old one and the new one. And it's even worse, because of, the lack of the, because of the speed of development of the QMU project and the lack of Zen-focused QMU committers, getting important features and changes into upstream can be rather slow. Uh, so if I just give an example, uh, PCI pass-through, an important Zen feature for many years in QMU Zen traditional, took six to eight months to get into QMU upstream. So we as the Zen upstream provide a version of, well, upstream QMU, which is actually an upstream QMU with a lot of Zen-related changes. We have a policy of not committing anything into QMU Zen which we think wouldn't be suitable for upstream. So in theory, QMU Zen as we call it, would be entirely suitable for use as a replacement for QMU. But in practice, we don't expect people to want to use our slightly funny branch. And for one reason, we don't do any non-Zen-related testing on it and it might be based on a different version of QMU than the one you'd use for other purposes. 
So the net result is that to get full Zen functionality, a distro like Debian needs to include two additional copies of QMU besides the normal QMU, and perhaps a, a different version for KVM as well. And one of the versions used by Zen is ancient. This is, of course, not the kind of thing that makes the Debian security team happy. Of course, it's by far, the only, uh, by far from the only occurrence of this kind of thing in the Debian archive. And at least in this case, Debian can work with an upstream who still support all the versions that Debian needs to ship. Uh, we, as upstream, do security and stability patches and compatibility fixes, even for the solidly frozen QMU Zen traditional. So all, given all that, it's good to see there are some efforts being made to help Debian manage code duplication and forking more effectively, for example, by searching the archive for similar code to ferret out copies that we didn't know about. But ultimately, in this case, the real work of doing support, particularly security support for multiple versions, is necessary. There's no other way to avoid breaking those old, perhaps hard to modify guest operating systems. So here we can see one of the key ways that we deal with the problem of interfacing compatibility. Just provide both versions of the software and use whichever one is appropriate somehow. And in principle, this is the same approach as done in a more formal, systematic way with any C library with a reasonably stable API. We're all familiar with Debian's well-established and mature approach to this, shipping perhaps two or three versions of any library in one release. I think Debian could really benefit from better tools not just for spotting embedded copies and packages which are forks, but also for cross-porting changes, tracking which embedded copies came from which versions of upstream, which had which essential security fixes, and all that kind of thing. So, enough about all that. There's one other difficulty which shows up in this diagram. The Zen project upstream doesn't promise that you can run one version of one word one version of the hypervisor with different versions of the tools. That is, the user space support and management software will only work with the corresponding hypervisor, and that's this thick version lock line all the way down there. We don't break compatibility within a stable release, um, but in general, there's no compatibility from one release to the next. The reason for this is that the management interface, the hypervisor, is complicated and closely dependent on the features available in a particular Zen release. Uh, this means that both we want to be able to add new interfaces, such as new management hypercalls, and we want to be able to discard old ones. And this whole situation leads to a similar problem to the one with Linux and UDEV. When you're upgrading, you want to upgrade the tools on disk in the file system and the hypervisor in slash boot. If you do this in the naive way, there will be a time when the two versions on disk don't match, and the system won't be able to work if it's rebooted. Luckily, this doesn't make the system completely unbootable um, and impede you fixing it, but it might well be unable to run guests at all, or the guests might break. And also, it makes it difficult just to try out the new version. Um, if the new version doesn't work, you have to fish out some old packages from somewhere and install them. So the Debian Zen maintainers have arranged to allow co-installation of different versions of the Zen tools. Now, our upstream build system doesn't support this particularly well, um, and I applaud the efforts of the Zen maintainers in Debian to sort this out. So the Debian packaging for Zen um, edits all the paths to contain the Zen version number, and there's wrappers for all of the Zen entry points which spot which version of the hypervisor was booted and run the right set of binaries. So this compatibility rule seems quite restrictive. And you might say, well, we should be more relaxed about it. But even if we upstream spent more effort on this area, it's not clear how much it would help. The most obvious improved compatibility guarantee would be to be using the tools from Zen version N with the hypervisor from Zen version N plus one. So relaxing this line here on the diagram. But that wouldn't do very much good, because firstly, a distro like Debian, which releases less often than Zen upstream, will still have the problem because versions of Zen in two subsequent Debian releases would often differ by more than one Zen release. And even for a distro which releases less, more often than Zen, or if we offered a longer compatibility period, there'd still be a complicated upgrade path. You'd have to make sure to install and boot the new hypervisor first before upgrading the tools. So in practice, Zen will probably anyway have to use the capability to co-install different tools versions and use the appropriate one. There's one other big transition which doesn't show up so clearly in this diagram. So the old Zendi daemon here 
um, which form the core of many of the old Zen tool stacks, is being phased out. Uh, mostly this is because it's a terrible mess internally, to the point where not only does nobody understand it, but it's probably not even possible to understand while remaining sane. Also, it implements in a reusable, non-reusable way a good deal of the functionality wanted by other tool stacks. So one particular such tool stack is Zappy over there, you can see, um, which is a sophisticated API forming the core of what's known as XCP, the Zen Cloud Platform, which is the free software release of Citrix Zen Source's Zen Server product, um, and now in Debian as Project Kronos. Zappy is used by orchestration layers such as OpenStack and CloudStack, and it's going to be shipped in Wheezy. Another intended user of, um, yeah, this is in the wrong place. Um, so we're replacing Zendi with a C library known as libzenlite or libxl. This, the command line tool, which is used by many Zen users to manage domains, XM, is being replaced by a mostly compatible rewrite called XL. Um, and the intent here, you see, is that users such as Debian's Zen Tools package will um, find that XL and XM are suitably compatible. So this is coming, nicely, coming along nicely in the upstream tree. We had a preview of it in Zen 4.1, which is going to be in Wheezy. And in Zen 4.2, LibXL will have an API which we intend to support in the future in a backwards compatible way. Um, sadly, ABI compatibility is still beyond us. So users of the Debian Zen Tools package and its utilities like Zen Create Image should find that the generated guest config files are all compatible with the new XL utility. And you can use XL pretty much like XM. So your ad hoc high level machinery shouldn't need too much adjustment, if any at all. And we spent considerable effort trying to figure out what Zen D does and reproducing its behavior, so far as it's comprehensible and reasonable. The results aren't perfect from a compatibility point of view, but we hope that in any particular system, the changes need to use XL rather than XM will be minor or hopefully completely absent. Um, one exception to this is the Zendi managed domains facility, um, which you invoke by saying XM new rather than XM create. Uh, we don't think many Debian users are using this, or indeed many users at all. Uh, the functionality like this is better provided for in other ways. Um, the most obvious is um, the init script based automatic starting setup, which is shipped in Debian for some time. Um, and if that's not sufficiently sophisticated, um, we'd suggest using a more sophisticated uh, management layer such as Zappy or OpenStack. So if you're a Zendi and XM user, we'd really like to encourage you to take a look at the new Excel tool stack. Um, in Wheezy. If you use Zendi directly rather than via XM or use XM in some way which you think might be unusual, you should check right now that libxl and XL meet your needs. Zendi is pretty much dead now um, as far as development goes and we're probably going to remove it in Zen 4.3 or maybe 4.4. Uh, probably therefore it won't be in Wheezy plus one. So if there's important features missing from libxl and XL, we need to know about it really soon. So one of the other users of libxl intended is libvert, which is a bit of a more complicated problem. I know libvert isn't very big in Debian, more of a Red Hat thing, um, but I will talk about it here briefly. I'm not much of an expert in it, um, so if anyone is, do speak up. Anyway, our intent is that the libvert driver, um, the Zen libvert driver, will be linked against libxl, um, so the libvert daemon itself will be linked transitively against a particular Zen version, and we may need to provide multiple versions of that too. So to try to make all of this somewhat less painful, we've been working quite hard to ensure that at least in the 4.2's release, we've got API compatibility in libxl, um, and indeed the command line compatibility with XM. So I hope I've given a flavor of some of the difficulties we face. Um, we're the upstream for quite a mature and sophisticated system, and um, so we've had to take some different approaches for some of the interfaces and some of the layers. So if anybody's got any suggestions for how, to, how either Debian or upstream could do things better um, and make our or other people's lives easier, please do speak up.
So any questions? Questions? Are your all brains imploded by my diagram? Nothing. Anyone on IRC? <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much.